So here we are. It's uh, time to start making, actually making the meat here. So what we're going to do is we've got our uh, our blood oranges here, and all 33 of them, and we are going to actually wash them because no idea where they've been, where they've come from. Uh, who knows what's actually on them. So first thing I do is I just take them Fill a sink full of soapy water and just chuck them in just Take them all and just chuck them in. I'll set you guys down right here while I go And now we have nice clean oranges. Just gotta dry them off and process them. So here we go. And there we go, clean and dry. And a big old bowl. Big old heavy bowl. So the next step will be zesting these guys and juicing them. So what I'll be using over here is a cutting board, knife, gloves because they are blood oranges and they will stain. Zip top bag for the zest. A uh, citrus juicer. I'm going to be putting them into the juice into the uh, this uh, two quart measuring cup for the time being, which I will then, uh, as it gets full, put it into one of these here uh, one gallon jugs. So yeah, that's uh, the plan now. All right, so we've got the oranges. The baggies in the cup, got the cutting board, got some uh, star sand right here. Basically, just gonna spray down the cutting board a little bit here and the knife. And paper towels right here, just to sop up some of the wet. Just basically sanitize things, try and keep everything as clean of the bad bugs as possible. So now it's uh, we're basically just gonna zest. Take the uh, peel off trying to avoid the uh, the yellow pith here. Put them in the bag. Alright, there we have it. All the uh, zesting is done. Switching over to the potato peeler was much better. Now ideally, you'd have some kind of like a food saver or something to get all the air out of this. But we don't have one of those, so we do it old school style. Straw into the zip top baggie. Vacuum pack are good enough. So these now go into the freezer because we don't need them for a couple of weeks or so. And then what we're left with is a whole lot of naked oranges. Put you back up there. So what we do now is we grab our Juicer. Give it a nice spritz. Get rid of some of these other things that we don't need anymore. And then we, uh, how much can you see here? There, nope. 
come over here, cut it in half. Beautiful, beautiful color. It's absolutely gorgeous color. And yeah, stick it into the juicer. The only problem with using this one is it's harder to do after you've zested it because the uh, strength of the skin is no longer there, but it, this one does do a better job. So there it is, 33 oranges made just a little over two quarts of juice and pulp and some seeds and such. So I'm actually going to rethink my recipe at this point a little bit and see if I really, uh, really want to do four gallons with this or maybe bump it down to three gallons to maintain the color and flavor profile that I want. Uh, so got to go do some quick math and uh, we will continue shortly thereafter. I'm recording. All right so we're back. I have decided to go through with making the four gallons instead of the th think about going back to three gallons. So continue on that plan and we're gonna my beautiful bride is behind the camera, so this will be a little bit easier now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rehydrate the yeast. Um, like I mentioned previously, I'm using the RC212. Uh, it is a red wine yeast, supposed to help with the keeping the color. And But first, we are going to measure out uh, uh, 10 grams of GoFirm. This is a yeast nutrient for rehydrating the yeast stem. So basically what I'm going to do is turn my scale on, switch it to grams, because everything is measured in grams, which is okay for the Canadian Sasquatch. We'll zero it out, and then we will open up the package, and sprinkle in about 10 grams here. And I did heat this water up, so it is roughly around uh, 104 degrees or 40 degrees Celsius as per the directions for rehydrating the yeast. So that is 10 grams of gopher. And we will just mix it up here, try to mix it up. and make sure there's nothing too horrible in there. And they just go straight in like that. And that's that. The yeast is uh, just going to sit there looking pretty for the next 15-20 minutes. So the next thing we have is get the sanitized bucket. Um, now I need to add honey to it. Uh, so what I need is uh, 10 pounds of honey. Uh, one gallon jug of honey is 12 pounds. My scale only works to 11 pounds. So I'm going to take my honey 
and I'm just going to start dumping a bunch of it into the bucket. And when I'm down around about this much, I will uh, stop and take it back to the scale and see if there is around two pounds left. pounds, two ounces, which is close enough for me at this point. Um, so yeah, so that's the honey if you want to have a look. Just a whole lot of honey in the bucket. The foam down there is the star sand that I used to sanitize with. Don't fear the foam. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the juice from the oranges. Next up is to stir it up a little bit. We've got this handy dandy uh, stir rod. Just connect it to a drill. And in it goes. So the next little thing that we're going to add is some pectin enzyme. Forgot to grab a spoon for this one. This will eat through the pectin that's in the, uh, the fruit. Um, help uh, extract more of the juices, uh, help with color retention, and also help with uh, hazing. And I'm using about three quarters of a teaspoon here. Uh, that's a tablespoon, that's way too much. That is way too much. That's a teaspoon. So we will transfer it over. About three quarters. Ditch that part. And then it goes. We will give it another stir here. Alright, so that's the juice and the honey in there. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll bring this back up here. Try not to make a bigger mess than I already am. So I'm doing it at a way so I can see with the light where my four gallon mark here is. Because I'm now going to add This much water, so a little bit more than two gallons. That's all the water we need. I'm gonna put this back on the ground here. It's got some more mixing to do, make sure it gets all fully incorporated. So the next thing we need to do is we need to take a hydrometer reading, figure out how much sugar we have, we're starting off with here. It's uh, about 8 to 9 grams per liter. So that's that's not so important for calculating the uh, alcohol because we're going to be step feeding this, which uh, will completely jack with the calculations. So to calculate the alcohol levels uh, later, we'll have to do a spirit indication test. But what this will allow us to do is tell us how much sugar is currently in there. And uh, that will give us a starting point of its uh, sugar breaks so that we know when to add the nutrients. So we're just going to use the wine thief, go down in there, let it fill up, put it into the test jar here, 
maybe. So much stuff in there that it's uh, pulp and whatnot that it's uh, causing some issues here. There we go. So all this pulp and stuff will also jack with our readings a little bit, but it'll give us a good starting point. I did not take a reading of the juice, simply because there is so much pulp and stuff in there that it would be uh, pretty hard to get a good reading. And I know Star Sands are non, no rinse sanitizer, but I like to rinse it off, especially when doing stuff with wine, just make it a little bit clearer. So here we go, We've, our gravity reading will be 1.11, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3. So that's 1.113. 1, 1, just write that down for my notes for later. And pull that guy out and set him aside someplace safe so he doesn't get smacked around and broken. Grab a little taster cup. Because this is why we do it after all, is to taste. And that just goes back in there. And we are good. Definitely get the, the honey, a little bit of orange. That is very, very sweet. Very, very blood orange-like. Very tasty. I will save the rest for my camera woman so she can try <laughs> it. <clears throat> so that's got us to this point where it's just a matter of uh, checking out the yeast again here. Mix them up a little bit. It's smelling very yeasty. So yeah, that will be that and we're just gonna grind it and dump it in. Just like that. Let's get a little bit of water in here to rinse this off. that. Now we uh, rinse this guy off. Put the lid on. Go into the magical bucket here. pieces for the airlock. And I'm just filling up the airlock here with some of the star sand. And then we put it in there. And now we just wait. Uh, probably be uh, I have no idea for this yeast. Usually I see activity um, Within 12 hours or so. Again, this is a new yeast for me using the new nutrients. So uh, we'll see. I will check back in it on it uh, tonight, see where it's at. Uh, probably be going real good tomorrow morning. Uh, I will uh, 
That's when we'll uh, crack it open and we'll uh, stir it up, add the first uh, batch of nutrients for the meat itself, not just uh, rehydrating the yeast. Uh, we will also aerate it, which for you beer brewers, you'll probably be very uh, scared of doing, but with uh, mead, you want to aerate it up to the th one third sugar break or the one half sugar break. Uh, just daily get some air in there so they yeast have a lot of air oxygen um, some of them I've actually used oxygen stone and did that way this one I'll probably just be using the uh, the little bar here because I'll be mixing in some uh, nutrients uh, we'll do that up to the one-third break uh, or the one-third one-half it's going to be hard with this one because I'm going to step feed the honey. I'm going to let it, the honey, uh, the yeast do their job all the way down to like about a 1010 or a 1005. And then I'm going to add honey back up to the 1020 point for gravity. That will uh, get our sweetness up and uh, to where we happen to like it. So yeah, that's it for today. We will... Uh, be back tomorrow with uh, more.